Mr. Mizo is Mr. Mike Zafirovsky, who is a 35-year business veteran. Most recently, he served as the president and chief executive officer of Nortel, a global telecommunications company. He also served as the president and chief operating officer of Motorola. And prior to that, he spent 25 years at the GE, where he served as the president and CEO of five GE businesses in the consumer, industrial, and financial services areas. In 2007, Mr. Zafirovsky was appointed by President George W. Bush to the National Security Telecommunications Advisory Committee, which provides analytics and recommendations to the president on a wide range of policy and technical issues related to telecommunications, information systems, and other national security matters. Mr. Zafirovsky currently serves on the board of directors of Boeing. He's also in, involved in various civic and business communities and is active in several professional, educational, and nonprofit organizations, including the Economic Club of Chicago and Macedonia 2025. He and his wife, Robin, have three sons. We'll now have Mr. Mike Zafirovsky give his remarks, and right after that, Mr. DeSenza. Thank you. Dame i gospodo, dobro večer. Vše mi ošto se siti tukaj ova večera. Great to have you here this afternoon. This is my first time back in Toronto in about nine months. Uh, and I would not and wanted to miss the UMD conference, came last year. But also, we'll make a couple of comments at the end. I do want to acknowledge a special person here th uh, this afternoon since I'll not be here over the weekend. Uh, but first of all, I was born and raised in Skopje, um, Macedonia. Immigrated to uh, the United States in 1969. Age 15 and a half, my sister was 13 and a half at the time, and my parents. My mom was 56, my age today. My dad was 57. Um, so people ask me, no money, cannot, never learned how to speak the language, never learned how to drive a vehicle. My dad used to walk a mile to his factory to work. My mom used to take three buses to work in her factory in Cleveland. So people say, my country go through difficult times. <laughs> you, all, you only have to look back to what your parents did for us to have a full appreciation. So my answer is absolutely not. This is simply living a dream and keep trying to do more in the future. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I've always been a proud Macedonian. I uh, used to go back once every three or four years to visit relatives and friends. But Franco was not involved at all with the country, with the government until 2002. I've been just promoted to be the president of Motorola a couple of days before. I was just walking around the lobby my secretary tracks me down. She goes, Mike, you have to come and take this phone call. I said, who is it? It was the president of Macedonia. He wants to congratulate you. I thought she was joking. She says, no. And sometimes she, she, I mean, she typically used to let, let tell jokes. But sometimes you can tell them, look in the eye. says, no, I don't know what. You have to talk to me. I'm not going to say no to a president of a country. So we have to at least go back to him and ask him what is his name. So unfortunately, again, after 25 years of General Electric, we have moved nine times as a family, putting your family, your friends, developing your own position. And although we've always been a very proud Macedonian, and frankly, have not done anything of value back to the, back to the country. There was President Trykovsky, who became very good friends, visited Macedonia five times before he passed away, unfortunately, through that very tragic um, airplane accident. Actually, he had emailed to me a few days before for the speech, which was supposed to be given in Sarajevo, and I made a couple of small edits. Uh, and the other person, you know, was a very happy victim, along with John Jr., when, uh, when John asked us to see if we can do something to give back to a native country. So a little background in terms of, a, uh, in terms of a, what drives me to help uh, Macedonia, and I'll make three points, and I think as I discuss the second point, the relevance and the imperative of a healthy economy and a healthy business for the, for the society in totality. But I'll make uh, comments in just a minute. First comment, I want to say why invest in Macedonia. And I purposely want to, want to follow Victor Misa because I do believe what the country and the government are trying to accomplish 
and I'll, I'll underscore the word trying to accomplish, is spot on. Nothing is ever perfect in terms of a, what it, re it requires to have a platform to be able to attract foreign business into your country, to be able to learn best practices from Singapore, from Ireland, from Turkey, from many other places. I think the government and Victor specifically have done that. And uh, so I'll now repeat what it is, the educational imperatives or the uh, incentives to be able to attract business into the country. But I do want to say that this it requires lots of perseverance and a significant amount of execution, both to bring countries and um, companies into the country. I've done, we've done an okay job so far. The last couple of years have been very difficult economically. Not many companies have been building new factories. So it's very important not to lose confidence that the attempts are the right ones and to keep using the resolve and that focus on execution to be able to bring more business in. But it's not only to bring business in. I mean, you'd argue it's the easier part, but then to help and to ensure that the companies in Macedonia are actually benefiting, whether that's quality, whether that's on-time delivery, and what is the cost structure.